So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Kenton and I are going to share satsang time. And I love sharing satsang time with Kenton. It's, it's such an interesting combination because Kenton has never met Guru Raj physically. He's met him here in his heart. And of course, as you know, I've spent many years with Guru Raj. And so I think it's just a beautiful balancing of, um, you know, just the devotion that is present there in both of us. Uh, and it doesn't make a difference whether it's a physical meeting, it is a meeting of the heart. And normally we stand next to each other and kind of feed back and forth and we yeah, couldn't figure funny. out. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't. Oh, I'm glad your sound is. I'm going to turn my sound up. Yeah, we couldn't quite figure out how to do that. So we couldn't really plan much of anything but a few clips that we have for you. We thought we'd play and discuss and um, keep coming back to the idea of silence, um, what that is. And I, I wanted to make a comment. Priscilla was talking about the jokester and, and how the, the guru, quote, manipulate, seems to manipulate things in our life to give us just what we need. And sometimes I've had a little trouble identifying it as the guru's doing it. And so more recently, what's helped is the idea, well, it's, it's the wisdom, it's the love that's manifesting whatever the situation is, it's being brought. And uh, it's never a mistake, no matter what it looks like. You know, we're here in Florida with 100 some degrees and the air conditioning's broken. We have no AC right now. So if you see sweat dripping off, this is what's happening here. And um, I, I was at the dentist the whole time you all were chanting and meditating and I was mentally chanting with you for this big consult, there's like all these problems going on in the mouth. I won't go into the details, but one of the interesting things is I was leaving, he kept saying, he said, you know, we just have, we have to create more space. You know, we have to open this up. We're talking orthodontics, we're talking redoing. I mean, it's a big mess. But anyway, what was striking me about, you know, all these teeth are really worn down. It's kind of like wearing down of the old. And just creating the space for nothing to be here but God, but divinity. And, you know, if that orthodontist or dentist has to crank <laughs> open more space, it's just an analogy that, you know, whatever it takes, you know, we surrender to what it takes to bring us into um, the love that we are, that... Uh, we feel that separation. We're born, and the moment we're born, you know, they cut the umbilical cord, we're separated. And the whole life, we're somehow feeling separation from others. Um, but there's something in there that is yearning for the love. And everybody wants to be loved. All the animals, I mean, you look at the dogs, they're up there, they're just wriggling their tails. And it's all about the love with the animals and the plants. When you love your plants, it grows better and more beautifully. And it's just everything is the underpinnings of all of creation is, or all of existence itself is that vibration of love, beauty, joy, the things that <clears throat> have been mentioned the last few days, that that is our nature. And yet we deny it. You know, we just deny who we are. And we believe the thoughts of the mind, our mind, we all come in with this idea that we're not good enough. And there's something wrong with us. You know, it's universal. Every single one of us somehow has that. And we, you know, it's, it's even that that helps us find the love and the truth. Because if we didn't have that niggling sense of being unsatisfied or dissatisfied, then 
maybe we wouldn't, maybe we wouldn't meditate. You know, if we didn't have that uncomfortable feeling in there that something's not right inside. And so we do all these things, as Guru Raj always says, we do all these things on the outside to um, make us happy and it doesn't work. And so we finally give it up. <laughs> the cars, the houses, the relationships, you know, the money, none of it works. And so we finally um, have, find that we have to keep coming in inside and sinking into that silence. And what is that silence? Um, it's just another name for God, isn't it? You know, eternity, silence, God, love, peace. All of it, satyam, shivam, sundaram, you know, the, all of those, the, the truth of our, of our pure existence, our true nature. It just is, it resides in the silence and everything else is an overlay. Everything we think is an overlay. Um, everything we see is an overlay, we see with the physical eyes. And, you know, what is satsang? What is satsang? It's that coming together to, to sink into the truth together. And as we've all felt the last few days, somehow there's an igniting. It's like we're fanning the flames. You know, there's this little flame inside. And uh, in satsang, we're fanning the flame and it's getting, getting brighter and brighter and increases that sense of, of yearning. Uh, increases that sense of um, devotion to um, to what is pure, what is eternal, what is true that is in you, that never leaves. It's always there, always there. We just overlook it because we're so distracted with our lives, with our minds, and so forth. So many distractions. I've often wondered why I do have so many distractions, like this whole business with Dennis today and no AC and at 1229, the dogs all had to go out to go potty. You know, it's like this constant barrage, you know, of intensity of experience, but it's only there to be seen through. It, and I think the more intense it gets with us, we start, it's like we become more determined, you know, um, I, I, it, it's just a play. This is like a cartoon. This whole life is a big cartoon and it really isn't who I am at all. And there's something here that can watch the cartoon from the silent space that I am, from the silent space that you are. Um, it can all just be watched. Um, and laughed at, <laughs> get that, just a healthy, a, a healthy vantage point to laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this, in the community, you know, it really helps when you, sometimes when you speak it out loud, you know, as meditators, one to the other, it, it helps us laugh at how utterly ridiculous it is, and then it makes no sense to take one whit of it seriously, no matter what the play is presenting to us. It's just the play. It's just the play, but we're the silent screen upon which everything happens. I mean, we are it, you know, you are eternal. You are the, the space with no edges, um, the infinite in which all of life plays. It's like, it's you. <laughs> it's like, surprise, <laughs> it's not out there. It's all happening right here. Everything's happening within that silent space. So, um, um, Kenton, I don't know that you have a few words, or maybe we want to watch a little video, or I what's we, your feeling? I think we can jump into the video. The, uh, I was just struck by your, your comment about it's, it's where God plays through us, and it, it is, you know, it is playful, and it is meant to enjoy, and it is meant to, to live, and it's, um, I just like the idea of of it playing through us. And I, I just like that word. So, yeah. It feels accurate. <laughs> and we can take it too seriously 
and every everything, even the goofy stuff is, or as Guru Raj says, the nonsense is a uh, is is worth it. That's that's the point. So, You're right. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So cool. we could start with yep. that number. Yep. The one we're calling number seven. Mm -hmm. Share screen. You'd be surprised I'm keeping myself together. <laughs> Keep yourself together through the power of love. And therefore the scriptures, all scriptures say, love thy neighbor as yourself. Huh? But I would add on to that, not only your neighbor. Hmm? Here's my neighbor. That's my neighbor. This is my neighbor. Hmm, let's see. So who is the doer? Hmm? But I need to cognize. And that is why we've given this mind to the thinking ability which separates you from an animal. Hmm? And what should the mind be thinking? Hmm? That everything in this world is good. Hmm? Yeah. And when you recognize that everything is good, slowly the one O in good will be rubbed away. It will fade away. And there's only God. The problem is the mind. And when you can transcend it, go beyond it and watch it act, then there's another part of you that will tell you. Mm, this part of the heart will tell you, ah, the mind is playing tricks. Let it have fun. Who cares? You become the observer, and then nothing can affect you. Hmm? And what really observes is not you, but the real doer. He is also the observer. So when you reach that area of being able to observe objectively, then the mind will not affect you. It will not affect you because you have become non-attached from the mind. You let the mind perform. Let the mind do what it ever it wants to do. To hell with it. Hmm? And when that is ingrained within you, you would be pouring out that heart that is within you. Hmm? The true master might analyze your mind, but his greater job is to open your heart. Hmm? And when the heart is open, you become more and more receptive to everything around you, because the heart only sees and feels and acts in goodness which is godliness. Ain't God good, huh? <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> yeah. So, when we stop thinking of ourselves as the doer, what happens is this, that we are surrendering to a higher force, which is in us and all around us. But the easiest place to start from is that place in us. Hmm? Because if 
you have some cognition and recognition of what is in you, you will automatically project it to everything outside you. Hmm? That is how one starts. That's how one starts. Until you feel that there is nothing outside you. Everything is inside you. So this is the process that you start off with a duality and you progress to qualified non-duality and the last step is total non-duality. If everything is found to be within you, what can hurt you? Nothing can hurt you. Because no one purposely would like to hurt themselves. Yeah. <coughs> yes. <coughs> and with this sense, one can find greater happiness and peace. Um, Kenton, would you like to comment? Uh, and sure. I apologize, I didn't know I was unmuted. I apologize for coughing in your ear, you guys. I'm going to try and be more vigilant here. I'm so used to listening to the audio tapes of things, and you guys were just always coughing. <laughs> I just thought, oh, that's on the recording. <laughs> yeah. The idea of, of everything is in you which means nothing external can hurt you is, is, uh, is beautiful. You know, the idea that the entire universe is here with me and, and, and is playing through me. And, uh, and what, a, what, a, what a joy it is to be a part of that play, just to, just to, to experience it. There's a, I, I, I don't remember who said, said this, but you know, the idea that God exists through all of us or he, he could not exist. That that's the that you know it's we are the thing we are the thousand fingers of God and each one is different, and it's uh and I I, I kind of love that the the more the more I sit with this, you know the more I remember I remember early on in meditation thinking about oh I look forward to connecting with divinity or I look forward to connecting with the the unity consciousness or whatever and and it's only been the last few years where I went there is no connecting because we are it, you know, the idea of connecting to is duality, you know, that if I'm going to connect to this thing, then I'm already setting it up from a place of two, two minds, the little eye is going to connect with the big eye. I like the idea of those two merging, but it's, you know, it, it, changing my language, especially when I'm, I'm teaching, is the, the idea I no longer think about connecting to, but am already it. You know, I am fully connected to it. I am fully connected to it because I am it, you know? And if I, if I forget that I am it, if I forget that I am divine, unity, consciousness, collective, you know, whatever you want to use as, as, as the language on that. But it's, uh, you know, it, that's the falsity. I'm, 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 it is wrong that I do not see that I am it. And, and, and the effort to connect to anymore is it, it becomes effortless. You know, uh, when we were doing uh, Guru Shakti at the beginning here, it was just, you know, it was just this kind of glorious connection and sharing and playing. And it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. And, uh, you know, it makes it hard for me to look at anybody and not just see me in them and them in me. And it's, it's the whole polishing the mirror thing, you know, but it's, uh, it's just, It is really making a big difference in my my personal journey to understand that I'm not working towards it, it's it's what I like about Guru Raj's term unfoldment instead of enlightenment. Enlightenment feels like there's something external to chase. And unfoldment is means I am already here and I'm just dropping the veils. You know, I'm dropping the falsities. I'm dropping I'm dropping the the uh, 
the, the, the names I call myself, you know, the categories I put myself in. And it's just this, this beautiful oneness. And it's, uh, and I like, I just kind of like how he playfully talks about that in, in that, that snippet there. So that's, that's, and that's the, that's the big thing. You know, every practice I do, every practice we do, just brings us to the realization that we already are that. And it's not, it's not a journey to, it's a stripping away the falsities that make us realize that we are not that already, <laughs> you know? There's no way not to be it, you know? Even when we don't think we are it, even when we're at our worst and, and our air conditioning is breaking and our teeth are falling apart and all of that, you know? It's, it's, you're still God, <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and, and that, that divinity is existing through this goofy body in these ridiculous situations. And, and I think that's just him, her, it playing, you know, it's, as you, you said at the very beginning video, that, that this is, this is, this is to play with, to play through, to just, so yeah, I, I, more and more I just set, settle into, uh, there's, there's no work to be done. There's practices to be faithful to. There's, you know, you sit and do your meditation and you can't not unfold. You just can't, you know? So it's, it's not this, uh, it's, not, it's not this attainment thing. I'm going to do my practices until this, you know? And as soon as you sit down in the chair with a goal, you're in the way of the practice. So how do we, how do we just drop into the chair and just don't have an expectation and just, and just be in silence? You know, the, uh, the silent stuff is huge. <laughs> the stuff we are, you know, we are always, there's background everywhere. And, and uh, the biggest gift this staying home for the past few months to me is, is uh, the ability to just be quiet. And, and, you know, as you were talking about space, having, your, having my space open up, you know, I've been, I've been bitching for years about how unbalanced my life is. <laughs> And right now it's pretty much in balance and it's kind of fabulous. And, you know, as things start back up again, this is what I have to hold on to, but I'm, I'm feeling myself opening up into space that I never allowed myself to have. And it's, it's making me happier. It's make, the word I've been using is it, I'm feeling like it's softening me that over, over the past months, as I pay attention to this, it's just, I'm just softening and it's a softening into grace. And it's really, it has been, I know it's, I know, you know, everyone's experience about this is different, but this, everything's a gift. So I, I don't have to feel guilty about saying this is a gift. <laughs> Everything is a gift. Whether it's difficult or easy or fun or, or not, it's everything is a gift. So trying to, trying to take advantage of this gift and, and, uh, and unfold as, 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 as much as I can without, without trying too hard. Because <laughs> then that just, that, then that just, fills the space, you know, by gosh, I'm going to try to unfold today. Well, I've just, I've now cluttered my space again, instead of just resting in the silence. So, I guess that's what I wanted to say about, about that. <clears throat> oh, I like that. I love where he was talking about, you just rub one O and everything then goes from good to God. You know, it's a, it's a scene that it's all one thing. Mm -hmm. um, how could it not be? It's just existence. Um, he also mentioned the word ingrained, and that stuck out to me again. It's like, why do we keep coming together? Why do we keep watching his videos, reading the transcripts? Um, it's so that this sense of who we are does become ingrained. And then when we do forget, you know, it's just a reminder to come back and remember there's nothing wrong with forgetting. It's, it's that process that has to happen. Uh, we have to forget in order to keep coming back. So it's all the, the, the forgetting part is part of the wisdom. Um, yeah, it's just part it's like of the, the drift, wisdom. It's like the drift in meditation. You know, the drift and the catch is the important part. It's not that we, it's bad when we drift in our meditation, that we have the gift of presence and identification with that big eye, the watcher, the awareness. Every time we catch ourselves in that process, that that's, that's the gift right there. You know? Right. It's activated in that moment, yeah. the, the memory of presence. Yeah. So it's, it brings bless it you. Oh, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I was muted. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> 
And that was perfect. Yes. <laughs> no mistakes, right? Yep, no mistakes. He also mentioned um, um, the, being receptive, you know, and just instead of resisting what's showing up, just receiving, being receptive to whatever's showing up here and knowing that it is the wisdom, that it, it's our teacher in that moment, whatever it is. And that was mentioned a few days ago too in, in someone's talk. I don't remember who, sorry. <laughs> and the, let's see, oh, and the surrender. Yeah, the surrender to who's doing all this anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it's just happening and, and uh, you get to watch it all. <laughs> it's just happening. It's like who's breathing, who's beating the heart. It's not you. It's, it's that higher power. It's that existence that lives through us that's doing it all. So, so there's no place for us to have sneezed and had it made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it just doesn't work that way. Everything fits together. All, they're all pieces of the puzzle that work in perfection to bring us back to the truth and back to um, just feeling, feeling ourselves, feeling who we are inside. I like that. There is only one truth. I mean, that really is, it's, uh, there's, you know, many paths to the top of the hill, but it, it's the top of the hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, should we do the other clip? Yeah. Number one, right? Number one. So uh, let me say a word or two before Kenton mm -hmm. starts this one. Um, uh, a couple of you asked what the numbers were on the last one we played. Uh, we'll double check. Kenton can look. We don't have the numbers. We can give you the names on yep. YouTube. But the series we're going to start now is called The Nature of Freedom. It's a very beautiful series. And there's six parts. We're not sure how far we'll get through them, but I would encourage you when you go to YouTube and you type in Guru Rajananda Yogi, then you look for the nature of freedom. Um, it's, it's one of those you can just keep watching and watching and you keep hearing it differently every time you hear all six of those sections. So um, it would be great to do the whole series, yeah. which we may not do. Oh, we were gonna do number six next. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's do number six. Yeah. We're yeah. going to give you, we're going to give you the last okay, piece shine. and then we're going to come back to the first. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause we have to start off with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Through in its fullest glory and in turn translated in the actions of everyday living and you feel that joy and that peace that peace which passeth all understanding hmm? yes, eh? then let me make you think too hard i think i've got a couple of jokes here and, um, this priest was sending a parcel um, to one of his parishioners. So the clerk, clerk, what do you call it, clerk? Clerk, we call it clerk. Right, this clerk behind the counter at the post office asks, Sir, is there anything breakable in this box? It was a Bible he was posting away. Hmm? He says, Sir, is there anything breakable in this box? He says, No, only the Ten Commandments. Hmm? I'm talking of sending a box. Uh, this fellow picks up the phone and he was trying to get through to the theater. Hmm? He was going to take his girlfriend to the theater and he says, could you reserve a box for two? So the girl on the other end of the line says, sorry sir, we don't have boxes for two. Hmm? He says, but is this not the Empire Theatre? So she replies, no, this is the Undertakers. 
<laughs> you see, so you go alone in that one box. There's no boxes for two. And a guru can only guide you. He does not shine the light upon you. He shines the light upon the path. But you've got to walk with your own feet. Hmm? you got to walk with your own feet. And no one can do it for you. So when these gurus come around and promise you God and promise you self-realization and divinity and self-realization and what all, don't believe it you got to do it yourself. You heard of Paddy Riske, the great musician. One day he was together in a restaurant with a polo player and while sipping a cup of tea they were chatting. So Paddy Riske says that you're a dear soul playing polo and I'm a poor pole playing solo. <laughs> yes, so it is so low. To find yourself, you have to do it yourself. These gurus and spiritual masters can only show you the way, the life, and that is the truth. Hmm? Do you see? Yeah. So, what we need most desperately in today's world by all humanity is integration and not fragmentation. With greater integration, you will know what life is all about. Hmm? You will awaken yourself to the beauty, the joy, which is divinity. For the nature of divinity is joy, the nature of divinity is beauty, and it is not bound. Hmm? So, your nature is boundaryless, boundless, and never in bondage. You create bondage for yourselves by your own thoughts, which has no reality on its own. But thoughts produces the effect of impressions upon your mind, patternings after patternings after patternings. And as these patternings become more and more, you become more and more miserable. You are denying yourself of what you are and by nature you are nothing but joy. You are divine. To repeat again, if God is omnipresent, then every cell of your body is divine. There's no place hmm, for anything else. Hmm? You go to a movie. Mm -hmm. And you see things happening on the screen. Mm -hmm. And if it's a tear jerker, is that what you call it here? Mm -hmm. If it's a tear jerker, you'll find so many hankies being pulled out and quite a few sniffles. And yet you know within yourself that this is not real which I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. It is a projection upon a pure white screen. You know that, and yet you start crying. 
and that is what you're doing every day in your daily life. Hmm? Now, if you fully realize that this is just a picture that's happening and there's nothing that I could do about it, hmm? whatever's taking place on the screen is taking place. If I could do nothing about it, hmm? then why, do, why must I cry? Why must I get involved? Huh? It's a story. Hmm? Why do, not, do I not realize that the screen is pure white? Pure white meaning purity. Hmm? And yet, you get so involved hmm, in that little story, the man slapping the poor woman or whatever, or the child, and you say, oh dear me, you start... Uh, hmm? So that is how we are living and it's about damn time that we change our attitudes by doing spiritual practices. Our awareness grows, our awareness expands. We look at life through a very small segment hmm? and not in its wholeness. Hmm? To me, wholeness is holiness. Hmm? Wholeness. W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S. -S. You'd be surprised I'm keeping myself together. <laughs> <laughs> It's about damn time, right? It's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I love where he says there's no reality to what we think. You know, those thoughts, there's just no reality, yet we take them to be real. We believe our thoughts. And, um, you know, it's like the jig is up. It's time to stop believing our thoughts and to step back and just watch them play and let them, like he said, let them have their way, let them have their life. Um, you know, somewhere along the line, and you know, we've talked about the mind really knows nothing. You know, he's alluded to that, not directly, I guess, on, on these tapes right now that we're looking at, our clips. But, you know, the our mind just, is a bunch of some scars. Our mind is just a bunch of junk going on all the time. And, you know, we're duped into believing whatever's going on there, even though it's not real. And I just like, it truly does not really know anything. And the only thing that, only place that knows is here. There's something that just knows that's deep within us, that knows the unknowable. Um, yeah, it knows the unknowable. It can't be spoken, but it can be felt. And uh, in the meditation practices, it, it leads us to that super conscious mind, which we'll be listening to soon, listening to him talk about, but it leads leads us into that unknowable place of the heart where is where we really reside. It's the truth of our existence. It's our true nature, pure, untouched, immovable. And that, and that is a nonverbal language. That is a nonverbal experience that, you know, when you, when you center into that superconscious of the heart, that, you know, the mind can't get you there. The mind, the mind, keeps you away from it. So as you settle into that, suddenly you, you, you may have no words to describe what you're feeling because, it, because, because language makes it small, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and the mind will want to analyze it and, and it, it can only be experienced. It can't be discovered through the mind or thought or analytics or, so yeah, I like the idea that it's just, it has to be lived, it has to be felt and not 
not not worked towards again you know as we work harder and harder it's the it's the whole self-help stuff that so often you know self-help and not to knock them but but self-help is is i think just gets in the way of the reality of just connecting to that or experience understanding that that is you and uh and we are in the West so goal oriented. It's like, I'm going to meditate so I can do this. I'm going to read this book. I'm going to do my positive affirmations so I can be better at this. And, and I just think all that stuff gets in the way because it's all up here. And until you can just drop into that silence and get rid of the words, it, it, all of that is keeping you from, from the experience of your true nature. You know, he mentioned the... Um in that joke about breaking the Ten Commandments. And uh, <clears throat> it, it, it made me think a bit about him in that, you know, the infinite has no rules. Um, it's only the mind that writes out the, the commandments of our life. You know, it's only the mind that embraces, you know, the shoulds and the shouldn'ts. But in the area of truth, uh, of infinite freedom, there are no rules. And any of you have heard any Guru Raj stories, he, he demonstrated that. I mean, he just, he just flowed and would do anything, say anything, wear pajamas to a satsang. Um, Jeff is making a note, which I can't read at the bottom, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he would just say, call up the senator of the state and tell, get them on the phone right now. I mean, there was not, there were no blockages. You know, he was completely uh, free to flow uh, from that creative place, which uh, Pasha was talking about, just that creative flow of um, flowing from truth all the time and, and, I just like the remembrance of that when I start getting into the shoulds and the shouldn'ts that there, there's a bondage in that. Um, mm -hmm. And like, what happens if I drop all those shoulds and shouldn'ts and just stop and go inside and then just move from there or let, let, let the body be moved from there. Mm -hmm. um, or let the words be moved from there. Um, it's just a kind of stopping and, and, and sinking in a little deeper and just um, not giving the mind all the value. It's like, where do I place the value now in life? In the mind that's always um, telling me lies and stories and making me wrong or judging other people or doing what it wants to do based on conditioning, based on patternings, do I give that credence? Or do I just say, okay, that's all there. And um, let's go inside and feel what's true in this moment now. And that's all there is, of course, right now. And well, and I, don't, I don't know that you can ever get away from those thoughts, but you can no. have them hold no power. That you, you know, it, that, and that's, that's the that's movie on the screen that you can smile at, you know. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think these are things that we don't shed necessarily. We just, we just don't let them have any power. And we see where, that they really are just an illusion that, that it, you know, a thought is just a mental construct, you know, there is no truth to it. <clears throat> if I, if my, if I have a different, uh, some scarred background than somebody else, my thought will be a different thing for the same experience. So what's the truth and the thought of the experience? And it's, uh, just being able to move past the self-criticism of going, oh, wow, I'm judging again, I'm judging again, I suck at this, to go, huh, how about that, I'm judging again, holy cow, and smile at it, because now you see it, you know, and I think we get so bound up in our judgment of what, you know, to be good meditators, to be good spiritual people, you know, we're, we're, trying, we're trying hard not to judge, we're trying hard not to be unkind, we're trying hard to do good, but I don't think any of that is real, the whole trying it's just once you once you find that grounding, once you find the truth, that stuff just falls away. You don't have to try to get rid of it. It just there's no power to it eventually, and uh, 
And I think we work hard to get rid of these things that we don't like. And they'll just, they'll just stop being important once you, once you find the grounding, I think. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's doing less than doing less work, really. It's just sit, get in the chair, sit, and just watch what happens and don't judge it. And, but yeah, it's tricky. It, Western mind is a funny thing. All minds are a funny thing. <laughs> but I think especially the Western mind really does wanna, wanna do it right. I want to, I want to do this right instead of, you know, and just all of, I said that before, all of that just gets in the way. You know, there are these times where the mind really does act up. It just really misbehaves and makes us miserable. You know, you, you mentioned this misery that we can get into when we believe it. And, um, there's something in the checking notes. Those of you that are teachers may recall it's just this one little line. It's like when a person's meditating and they feel some agitation to ease off the mantra and just feel the body. Let the awareness come to what's being expressed in the body and just let it unwind. And excuse me, hold on a second. Okay. And I've been taking that more recently just into everyday life, not just into meditation, because, you know, we do become reactive. Situations happen, right? And then we become reactive, which is our patterning. It's not like we decided, oh, I'm going to get mad about this. It's like, boom, you know, it's like that knee reflex, boom, and then we have the reaction. So taking any label off of it, let's say it's anger, just sitting, just stopping dead in your tracks or sitting down or just taking a moment, not even sitting down, but it's really nice if you can sit if you've got the space uh, and time to do that. Just sit down, close the eyes and just feel in the body what it feels like because something is trying to purify. Something's trying to, an old way of reacting is trying to de-stress. It's trying to work its way out of the nervous system. And the more of this that gets released, the samskaric material, as we know, then there's more space for the light to come through. So there's, there's, it was just a really simple instruction that he gave of just feel the body. And it's become one I think that we all can use is to stop and we don't give it a label. That's the whole key. Just feel the energy. And it's an energetic it's an energetic pattern that's lodged in our nervous system and it wants to unwind itself. And as we let our awareness come to it and just allow it, just hold it without any judgment, without any labels, um, it's amazing how it does dissolve. It doesn't mean it doesn't come back again, but each time we're allowing it to dissolve and um, let it go back to wherever it wants to go. But um, I just wanted to share that with you, um, that, that just simple instruction he gave of just being aware of the sensation and feeling it in a neutral way that, um, that might be helpful. Okay. It's sure been helping me in the last month. <laughs> <laughs> Just feel the energy and just let it have its way because if I, if I don't, if I just push it down, it's just going to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that tension, that anger or whatever it is that we're feeling, it's only going to keep coming back if I keep pretending it's not there or, oh, I want to go be spiritual and I don't want to express any of this. I got to be mm -hmm. quiet. It's like, no, not doing that anymore. But it can Suddenly be, it's whack-a-mole. <laughs> it's what? Whack-a-mole. I hit this one, and another one pops up, and I hit oh, this Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. It's like that game. But, you know, but this is a way to release it and, and, or let it be released. Uh, and it wants to be released or it wouldn't be coming up. You know, it just needs to surface. It just needs to unwind. And I don't have to make a story up about it. That's the beauty of this. I don't have to interpret it. I don't have to judge it. I don't have to give it a name. All I have to do is feel the energetics of what's happening in, in my body in that moment. And then of course, you know, we can go back a, a little bit of mantra, a little bit of tra or 
or maybe you just get up and go do the dishes, you know, whatever. I've been uh, recently playing with the gap practice a lot, the, or finding the gap, and, and thinking about it this as stillness and quiet, that, you know, the idea, you know, between the inhale and the exhale, there was a moment that is stillness and is silence. And just noticing that so that I, I start to connect to that stillness. Um, he, he uses the example of a pendulum in an old grandfather clock that it moves in action. And then just before it moves again, there's that moment of stillness. There's that gap between the up and the down. And, uh, and I, I, I play a lot with trying to find the gap between my thoughts, you know, so that there's a beat, but there's a tiny, tiny beat between my thoughts and, uh, and just experiencing that silence and without, without then the thought um, adding something to it. And it's, it's that that's being, because I do have some time to, to, to work on this now. Um, that one, that one's being very, very helpful to me, just watching those moments of, of, of stillness, of silence. Um, and it's, uh, and it's fascinating because they're tiny, 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 but you go, but that's the reality. That, that, that beat between the, the, the illusion, that beat between this action, this beat between is, is it. And then all of a sudden we move back into action. And, uh, but we have these moments constantly. And if we just start to identify those as, as actually more real than the action as the pendulum swing, as the inhale or the exhale or, or the thoughts that just that gap, that little gap right there is, is a, it's becoming precious to me. You know. Yeah, there's another one very similar to that. Um, oh, dog just came in, uh, which is just listening to the silence. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, it's just so interesting to listen to the silence. You can actually, you're listening not with your ears is what's mm -hmm. happening. You're, you're listening from here, you're listening with your heart and you can feel the silence. And as you do that, I mean, again, you fall into who you are, the silence. It's, it's just listening to yourself. So uh, it's, it's one of those little momentary things that you can do anytime, just mm -hmm. listen to silence. It's beautiful, you know, when you're in the woods to do that. It's, it's beautiful to do it in a silent place, but it can be done in road traffic, it can be done anywhere. I mean, it's always there. Yeah. It's, we're just overlooking it. Overlooking. Well, having all of these tools in our pocket for when we, when we either need them or remember them. <laughs> I think often we need them and we don't remember we have them in our pocket. Right. You know, the listening to the silence or just feeling, feeling the self um, first thing when you wake up mm. before anything started. You know, just taking one minute before you get out of bed um i've always found is a helpful time to mm -hmm. just take a moment and feel and listen um without we'll just do that no mm -hmm. story around it yeah. <laughs> so what do you think should we go to one more clip yeah how's right. that time The superconscious mind, although it is also relative, is at the subtlest point of relativity and therefore. Actually, I think I skipped one. Yeah, I think you want to do number one. Yep. I think that's number two, yep. maybe. Thank you. Yep, you are absolutely right. It's like, how many rounds of chant? Count your beads. <laughs> so there's six parts to this, the nature of freedom that 
you all are going to want to watch on YouTube. It, it's beautiful. Oh, here we go. From the I think, beginning. I think it was Sujay that asked the question, actually. I know here. Hmm? What is the nature of personal freedom? What is the nature of personal freedom? Hmm. What is nature? And what is a freedom? Good. You ask this question of freedom because you feel that you are bound. And if you feel that you are bound, by what are you bound? Hmm? So, can we put the question the other way? What is the nature of bondage? Hmm? So that freedom can be known. Hmm? What are you bound by? Hmm? Is it a process? of your personal thoughts or the patternings of your own mind that makes you feel that you are bound or are you really in bondage? Do you think that you are bound? And if you think you are bound, where does this form of thinking come from? Because your very nature is freedom. If divinity is omnipresent and if divinity represents freedom, then because of the nature of omnipresence, which is freedom itself, you should feel free. So now, this bondage which you find that shackles you, this these handcuffs, this ball, this chain hmm? that does not allow you to move as you want to move, where does that come from? Does it really exist? And if you do find any reality in it, is the reality of your mind or is it an actuality? Hmm? There's a difference between reality and actuality. Huh? A reality could be appearance, hmm? while actuality is that what is. Hmm? Now, you go and see a movie, or you go and see a magic show, and you find the magician cutting up a woman in half. Hmm? And you know it is an illusion. Hmm? And yet, it is there. It seems real. But is it actual? Hmm? For the woman will turn up a few minutes later, more alive than ever. Hmm? So, what is bondage? Hmm? Can bondage be described? as illusion. So are you living in illusion or are you living as you really are? Teachers tell you be like Krishna, be like Buddha, be like Christ but I tell you be yourself and by being yourself you can get rid of the illusion of bondage. Hmm? You that are boundless, you that are boundaryless, why do you go through the suffering of the sense of bondage? Now, if you are going through the sense of bondage, where does bondage come from? Where does this illusion or superimposition upon yourself come from? It comes from, it stems from your thinking. 
think that you are bound and you are bound. Think that you are free and you are free. Hmm? Keep on thinking I am a sinner, I am a sinner, I am a sinner. Keep on thinking I am weak, I am weak, I am weak and you will become weaker and weaker and weaker. Hmm? So, you do not have any control over yourself. And because of the patternings in your mind, because of the various experiences that you have gone through in this life or perhaps in ages past, who knows, has created patterns upon patterns within your subconscious mind and the subconscious mind not being able to contain all those patterns upon patterns upon patterns has to release them and the only method the only way it could release them would be to expel those patternings through the conscious mind, through the analytical mind, through the thinking mind, which in turn expresses itself through your five senses, like hearing, touching, smelling, feeling. So, this originates in the subconscious level of the mind which is non-existent in substance. It is only a coming together or a bundle of impressions. Now these impressions come in two different ways. Hmm? Good. They can be gathered from past experiences and they can be gathered by your environment. Now, if the environment impresses you so much to leave those cars of patterns in the mind, what do you do? Not to be affected by the outer impressions. The way is to strengthen yourself. Now how do you strengthen yourself? Hmm? How can you get rid of the patternings and how can you stop yourself from the input that is thrust upon you hmm? through your teachers, through your parents, through your friends, hmm? through the environment at large. How can you stop yourself from being influenced by these influences? Hmm? What tools have you? Hmm? The only tool you have is the mind itself where the conscious level of the mind the analytical level that functions from the left hemisphere of the brain that analytical level of the mind can be led can be led through the various patternings of the subconscious level of the mind. You do not need to destroy those patternings because there is nothing in the universe which is destructible. And even science today has proved that you could never even destroy a single atom. Hmm? When even this body is discarded, this body is not destroyed, but it will revert back to its original elements. Water will go to water, air to air, ether to ether, hmm? dust to dust. Hmm? That is the idea. But man has the facility, an inbuilt facility, to reach further back with the help of the conscious mind and going beyond the subconscious mind to a level which I term the superconscious mind.
There's a lot there. <laughs> you know, I was thinking again about um, what I was telling you about the unwinding. Uh, you know, he was saying this has to be expelled. You know, those patternings have to be released and expelled. And he said, and then it happens through the senses. And so that particular one is like feeling, just feeling the energy. So we're kinesthetically feeling it and letting it release. And I was thinking about Colleen, I don't know if she's on today, but <clears throat> excuse me, she was saying sometimes she just couldn't meditate and we all have that, you know, we just can't meditate. And this was actually the instruction when you feel you can't meditate, feel what, what he called just feel the body, you know, just be aware, it's an awareness practice as well. Just be aware of the energy and the sensation in the body and just letting your awareness touch it allows it to unwind and release by itself. And it doesn't have to make any sense at all. And there, as I said, it doesn't have to have any words around it. We're just feeling that sensation and receiving it and allowing it to unwind like through the senses and um, go back to its original elements. And, you know, it's not, um, it, it, it's not going to live here anymore in this nervous system. It's time has come. And sometimes, you know, people will say, oh, I've been meditating all these years. What's going on? I can't meditate. It's like we've hit a boulder. And he, he often said, you know, when you first start, maybe you just released a lot of little things. But as you keep going over the years, you start getting down to the nitty gritty of the real bullshit that's in there. And it wants to be released. It wants to um, create the space so that um, the light can be expressed in its full beauty. Um, that's, what it, that's what it's born to do, express. It's born to love. It's born to be what it is in its purity, in its um, true nature. Mm -hmm. He talks about uh, banishing the darkness by turning on the light. The idea that the idea that it, it's it's uh, th these things are always there, but moving through. I, I think he goes on the next couple ones about taking these these samskaras in the in the subconscious and moving them up through the consciousness, taking it as kind of a vertical path from and eventually from the superconscious to the subconscious to the conscious, and. Uh, and that's the way to work through these things and that they naturally want to move, move up like that. And uh, it was a new way of thinking about it for me. I, I like that. But um, years ago on, on a course, someone was talking about, or I think it, they were playing a, a video of him talking about sterilizing the seeds of karma or sterilizing the samskaras, that you can't get rid of them, but you can, through these practices and this awareness, you can make them not grow. You can make that that samskaric experience be there, you can see it, but it does not then manifest itself into, into a feeling, into a thought, into something that then affects you and leaves an, another impression. So I like, uh, I think often of um, sterilizing the seeds and uh, that's, a, that's a useful, that's useful for me. And the idea that the practices help do that, that it, it, it heats them up and they, 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 can't, they can't grow though. I'm, there's another image about, um, you know, you, you are what you water. You know, if, if you're watering the anger, you're going to become angry. If you're, if you're watering the fear, you're going to become, these are the plants. And I think about them as, as plants that are in your, in your living room and all of a sudden you're, you're surrounded by plants you didn't know you were watering, you were unconscious watering. And, uh, and it's like, oh, I think I'll water the happiness plant today. <laughs> I think I'll water the compassion plant today. I think I'll stop unconsciously watering the fear plant or the, and, uh, but the plants are always there, like the seeds are always there, that they're always there. You're never going to get rid of the plants. These are all, these are, you're living with these your whole life, but it's uh, what you're bringing the attention to is what, is what's going to, is what's going to be driving your, driving either your happiness or driving out your happiness. Yeah, attention, attention and awareness is really where it's all at, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, 
and judging. <laughs> I can, I can notice you, it. But then you become aware that you're judging yeah. and that's the, you catch it, you know, yeah. that's, yeah. yeah, you catch, you catch it and go, Oh, uh, there, there goes, for being brilliant. <laughs> well, there goes that pattern again. It's just playing out. Yeah. And it's not us that's being judgmental. It's the pattern. It's the conditioned pattern. And it repeats. Those same patterns keep coming back and coming back until we actually see it's only a pattern and we learn not to believe it anymore, not, not to identify that that's us. It's only the pattern that created the anger. It's the only pattern that created the judgment. It's not our true nature. I'm, I'm feeling, I would like to share one other thing with you all. Um, uh, it, it may be useful, it may not, you know how it is, you take, you, you listen to anything and you take what's useful and leave the rest, but um, it's, uh, well, let's just do it and let's see. Um, Okay, so close your eyes. Let's all close our eyes. So the question, well, let's just do Guru Shakti for a minute. I think we want to do that. So the question to you is, are you here? So just remaining with your eyes closed, just check it out. Are you here? And it's pretty undeniable. You know, I think we probably all come up with, well, yeah, we're here. And how do you know you're here? How do you know you're here? And just let yourself drop past the mind, just into the, into the being, into the center of your being. How do you know you're here? And you may notice that it's just a felt sense. There's something that knows it's here. And it's just pure awareness. It, it, the awareness is aware of itself. It just knows it's present in this moment. And if you keep noticing just what is it that's a aware that it's here. It's pretty infinite. It's pretty expansive. It uh, doesn't have any edges. It's just this infinite sense of presence that is always there with you that's never not been with you. And it's very simple. It's just awareness that's always there. Silent, unmoving, vast, eternal.
and everything happens within that awareness. Everything plays on the field of that screen of awareness. which is your divine nature. Just being, being. So just those two little questions will often stop the mind um, Can open the eyes if you wish or not but those two questions like am i here um how do i know you know that i'm here um it it has the possibility of just cutting through everything and dropping you right in to the silence and because it's a felt sense it's dropping you into the heart of who you are um, the pure nature of the self and um, yeah there's no chit chat around it it's just feeling so I just wanted to share that with you because I found it really helpful and for any of you that want to play in that play with it it's um, a simple two questions that like I said, it just cuts through all the crap really fast. I love that. Thank you. I remember maybe five years ago, you were, you were here in Knoxville and you and I were uh, doing Trotec up in our meditation room. And you were saying something you were playing with at the time was, what is the awareness that is watching my awareness watch the flame? And, uh, and it was the same kind of thing, how, you know, that infinity mirror of, of that. But I think about that a lot to go, you know, I, I think this is my awareness, but then I'm, something else is aware of that and something else is aware. And that there's, a, there's, an, there's an infinite nature to that that I, I cannot, well, I can't put my brain around because I can't. Because <laughs> it's not built for that. <laughs> well, there's something aware, you know, perception's happening. We're perceiving the flame, but there's something aware that perception's happening. You know, it, it's a track tech is an amazing practice because you start becoming aware you're not that which is watching the flame. You're that which is watching you watch the flame. <laughs> and, you know, play with that, you guys. It's just, it's just like you go, oh, yeah, I'm just watching perception happen. Yeah. Which is similar to what we just did, that process of, you know, well, how do, how do I know I'm here? It's like, because there's awareness. There's just that silent field of awareness that's been with us ever since we can remember. It's always been here. It's never been anywhere else, but here now in this present moment, you know, it's not a past thing. It's not a future thing. It's just awareness is what's felt in the moment. And that's where the heart, you know, that's where the heart, flows like through that that presence through that from that true nature that's always there with us never anywhere else just um not noticed that simple we just are not noticing our own divine nature which is silently holding our hand <laughs> embracing us holding us moving us breathing us beating our heart um, it's just the truth of who you are. Mm. That might be a nice place to, to, to finish here. We've got five minutes left. Do you have anything else that's speaking to you? Or? No, maybe we want to see if anyone has any thoughts. Or... It just feels like a really nice place to land. Do you have the number of the nature of freedom or, or we just know that it's on video? Yeah, I, I don't have the number. Video? Can you just please repeat the last two questions? Um, are you here? 
And you can usually catch that one without too much trouble. You know, you close your eyes. It's like, yeah, okay, I know I'm here. And then how do you know you're here? And it's not a mental question where, you know, you prove it with your mind. Your mind likes to prove everything. It likes to land somewhere and it wants to prove. So this isn't proving anything. It's just feeling, well, how do I know I'm here? And it just takes you into that place of feeling in your heart. Um, but they're so simple. But who we are is so simple. It's like Raj always said, you know? It's so simple to be happy, but it's so difficult to be simple. It's just all so simple. And the mind is the one that throws all the, throws the monkey wrenches into the batch. Those crazy monkeys, once again, in your mind. <laughs> but that's the play of life. What would we do if we weren't doing all of this? You know, what would we do? So, you know, the stone is conscious. It just gets to sit there, but we get to actually play, play. You know, we get to move and express, as Gomila was talking about, and Priscilla. You know, we get to express this. And, and that's what we're born to do. As you go on and listen to this, we didn't get through all of them. You know, he ends up saying at some point, this is what you're born to do. You're just born to live the truth of who you are and love. Um, that's the whole purpose of life. It's not about a job. It's not about your attainments. It's not about degrees. It's just about just being, just being yourself. That's it. And finding yourself is like, how do I know I'm here? Well, okay. <laughs> Myself is here. And that's all there is to it. It's just here, being, loving, um, receiving, receiving the wisdom as it shows up in so many varied ways. Was there another question that I cut somebody off? Like Beth has one. Beth? You're muted. I just wanted the name, the name of the first, that's the first clip that you did. I couldn't read it on the screen. What was that? Um, I'll have to go, well, let me go look. Number, se number seven in the lineup. Right. It was, uh, Was it keeping yourself together? That's what. Yes, that was it. That was That's it. That was the name of it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, keeping yourself together, and that's and that's a two-part one. So we just saw the first part of it. Sunito? Thank you. Question? I think it's two o'clock. Was there another question? Sunita had her hand up. <laughs> but she's muted. Can Priscilla uh, unmute her? Can you tell us the, na the number of the Nature of Freedom tape uh, satsang? I don't have that just because it was pulled off of the, the uh, YouTube and it wasn't listed on it. But oh. I can I can I can find that in, in assuming it's an American one. We I could search it, or Sutria might know it off the top of her head. Yeah. She, um, she it's actually I think it's an eighty. Oh, maybe I did write it down. It actually is on. I think it's an eighty-seven. I'm sorry, I don't have it written down, but. Um, okay, we can find it. You'll find it on YouTube. It's all sequential. Um, the nature of freedom is the topic. Yes, yeah, it's a beauty. Okay, um, I wanted to speak about a song that Praetum used to sing to us. That was about his plight, which was beautiful because he was so devoted to all of us. He had our pictures, he, every day he'd go through them. He, was told, he told me and he would meditate on us. And he would come to us and he would you know, make us sit down for so long in his fire of the absolute which was the heart. 
And he would sing to us saying, Mary Deal, Terry Deal, Mesekeju, which meant without you, how can I live? How can I live without you? And he had the biggest devotion and appreciation for the life that he came into as the avatar to give that to us. And it was so beautiful when we talk about integration because we're in our houses on no touch practice. Does anybody remember that? Let me see the hands up. If anybody remembers the no touch practice, we've all been on it. I came from a year of 30 massages a week and I had energies. I didn't know I was a black hole, but I am. And there were energies flying all over and Eddie's like, this place is so haunted. We gotta do something, but it was the fact that I was grabbing pain and not even knowing that it would fly back to its source. The energy cannot be separated, that it just moves and it goes. So within this no touch practice and then coming back to all of you, believe me, last week I was thinking, I'll sign up eventually. Did anybody else raise your hand if you felt resistance to coming to this course? Anybody beside me? It's just online, boy, did I feel it. <laughs> Oh, and yet the amount of Shakti, the amount of Prayatam within my heart expanding like it would on a course is actually happening. And yesterday, you know, I thought, okay, let me get up at 9 a.m. We got a tea time. I'll get it before the satsang. And about the time when you started doing the chant, my whole body seized up. I could not hit from the left, the, the hand on the left, you know, and I've been golfing 14 years, so I'm actually pretty good at it. But boy, the body said, no more. You are in meditation. You're not there, but you're here. So look at that integration that has happened through time to space, from us being all together in Bourbon A to uh, California to the New York time, and being within our own spaces, even in other countries, that brings us into the heart, the oneness, the unity that we are. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for this healing. Everybody coming together has really helped me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sunita. You reminded me that uh, when, him, when he was talking about, it's either in one of the freedom tapes or one right after it, one of the two right after it. He says, that's really our job as human beings to become who we really are. And, you know, at this time, that's how we help the planet. You know, at this time, that's, that's our, our offering to unfold. And that it, that's our job as meditators to, to be, wake up to who we really are, like he was saying at the beginning. Just wake up. Wake up to our divine essence. And that will radiate out and that will uplift those vibrations go out and uplift all of humanity because we're one. We're one. So thank you all so much for, for our oneness, for our devotion to this path, our devotion to the truth, our devotion to God and Guru, all the same thing, to the wisdom, to the love. Mm -hmm. And Kenton's going to lead us in a wrap. Ready? It's a wrap. <laughs> Bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>